Hello, in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the LDO Motors Voron V0.1 kit. We're going to be talking about the printer itself, the quality of the kit, my thoughts on the build process, and whether you should be investing your money in this kit versus other kits or self-sourcing. Hope you enjoy the video. So first off, this kit here was provided by LDO Motors free of charge on the condition that I provide my feedback on it and do a video or two on it. No money has been exchanged and of course all these words and opinions are my own. Now I've had this printer up and running for a couple weeks now and I'm just about to do the final tune on it but as you can see I've printed multiple different things on it so far. Many of these models can be found on our video sponsor Thangs.com so more on them later. So first off, the white elephant in the room, a Voron built from a kit. As you know, there has been some contention recently with Vorons and kits and whether it is worth getting a kit as right now, again, there are no official kits from Voron Design. Voron Design is a design team. They're not a printer company. So if you want to buy a Voron, you have to build a Voron. Recently though, over the past year, various companies have started coming out with kits to various degrees of quality. However, again, none of these are endorsed by the Voron Design team. Now, LDO Motors has thrown their hat into the ring with their own V0.1 kit. Now, this kit was a pre-production kit, and I have provided some feedback on some things I would like to see changed in the final production of the kit. So starting off with the printer itself, what is the Voron V0.1? It is the second iteration of the Voron V0 printer. It's a small size Core XY printer. It's got 120 millimeters cubed print volume. The frame is built out of 1515 extrusions, uses NEMA 14 motors. As with all Vorons, it is designed to be fully enclosed. It even has a magnetic front door, removable top hat, and you can print pretty much all plastics on the Voron, except for the fancier plastics such as Peak and Ultim that required active chamber heaters. Some of the big changes between the V0.1 revision and the original Voron V0 are that with the V0.1, the lead screw, for the Z motion is now an integrated lead screw with a custom designed pancake stepper motor to fit in this form factor. On the previous revision, it was a NEMA 14 belted to a lead screw in an assembly. This setup did work. However, there were common issues with lead screw wobble. This new integrated setup alleviates most of those issues in a more compact design. Secondly, with the V0.1 revision, we now have a direct feed tool head with the mini afterburner installed. This allows you to get all the benefits of a direct feed setup while still keeping the compact small size of the printer. And yes, even though it now has a direct feed setup, it can still go plenty fast. Also, there has been some changes to the layout of the electronics and the bed itself is now 24 volt versus a mains powered bed. Now, what about the LDO Motors kit itself? How does it compare to other Voron kits on the market? Well, first off, it is a more premium kit. Uh, pricing for the kit is roughly around $650 US. There's a slight variance depending on your vendors and your region, of course. So comparing that to the common kits that you see on AliExpress, it is a couple hundred dollars more. Now, I have not built or have had hands-on impressions with any of the AliExpress kits. However, after building this kit and just seeing what the bill of materials on the AliExpress kit include and the work you have to do, the extra money I believe is very well spent when it comes to this kit. This kit includes everything you need to build the printer, save for an X-Acto knife, a screwdriver, and maybe some wire snips. Everything you need to build this printer as shown here comes with the kit. It even includes a heat set tool for installing your heat set inserts it includes super glue, grease, your 3M VHB tape. It even includes Allen keys that don't seem that bad actually. There are a few premium add-ons to the kit too. Something as simple as including knurled nuts versus the bomb spec of a printed part with a heat set insert. And in my opinion, one of the biggest quality of life improvements is for attaching your MGM7 rails. You no longer have to print the M2 nut holder, which is kind of finicky and use that, it actually comes with a pre-made steel insert with M2 holes pre-drilled and tapped into it at the correct spacing so that you can easily install your MGN7 rails. My kit again was a pre-production kit and it came with just a tool steel insert with a blued finish on it. The final revision will be nickel plated, I believe. 
and the rails themselves are stainless steel rails and they came clean out of the package. In fact, all I did was give them a quick wipe down to remove any excess oil and grease them up and they are running just fine, no grit. Also, another big advantage of this LDO kit, um, all your wiring is pre-done. There isn't a massive wire loom compared to say a Voron V1 or a V2. However, all the wires that come off of your fans, your hot end, your bed, connecting your power supply to your Raspberry Pi, for example, they all come pre-cut to length and pre-terminated with the appropriate terminals on it. Wiring up a self-built printer is one of the most monotonous, tedious steps. It usually eats up a couple hours. Having it pre-done, saves a lot of time and when you factor in time is money spending a little bit extra to have all this work pre-done to save yourself a couple hours may be worth it to some folk another premium feature of the kit is that it includes a fetus all metal dragonfly hot end now what about the build itself again this kit comes with everything you need to build the printer except for of course the printed parts which you either are going to have to print yourself or source from either a print provider or the printed forward program or hey maybe just a friend and for this build i live stream the whole thing so if you want to know how long it takes to build a v0.1 why not check out the live stream i did a 10 hour live stream i marathoned it and we went from having the printer in parts to as it is right now uh, except for the panels on i did that later and printing so in terms of time to build a V0.1 from the LDO Motors kit with all the pre-done wiring and everything, I spent about two to three hours uh, before the build doing some prep work. I installed all the heat set inserts. I installed all the firmware and the configuration on the controller board and the Raspberry Pi, just to get that out of the way, as well as cleaning and greasing the rails and a few other odds and ends thing. The actual assembly of the printer, it took roughly eight hours to get it to its first move another hour or so of just making sure everything is set up right doing PID tunes and by hour 10 we had a printed Voron calibration cube. Realistically I've built many Vorons over the years. I do have quite a bit of experience with them. I have not built a V0.1 before though so a 12 to 13 hour build for somebody like me may correlate into a weekend project for somebody with some basic printer building skills. So I did build this fully stock per the manual i follow along with the manual with the build the only things i really haven't changed with this is i do have the front door that opens uh, i have not attached the top hat though in my case here having the top hat be removable is more of a benefit as this machine will be printing both abs and pla being able to quickly just open the door take the top hat off print pla put the tap pot back on close the door and be able to print ABS is a nice feature. Now some after action report with the build itself. Uh, I did print the calibration cube and I also printed this skull and Charmander there in ABS just to ensure that everything was working. And with ABS, if you're curious, the chamber temperatures that I'm getting right now with this not being sealed up, I don't even have foam along the panels. I'm getting just over 50 degrees Celsius measured off the hot end with the bed set at 100 degrees Celsius after about one hour. So this does get plenty warm to print most of your um, higher temperature plastics. I do know of others that are able to get around 60 degrees with a little bit of insulation and sealing up the gaps. And it prints well. I've done several models over the past two weeks uh, before going into the final tune of the printer, just to ensure that everything was working. And I'll bring up some issues that I did have at this point. Now I do recommend now spending some time with your printer after a fresh build, just getting some hours on it before you spend time doing things such as input shaper or pressure advanced tune. It's a new build. You may have messed something up or you may have some issues that you need to resolve that are best done before spending time tuning it. Otherwise you may have to redo some things. So in my case here, I had uh, two problems crop up within that first two weeks after the build. Both of them are my fault. The first one was the piece of Bowden tube between the included Fetus Dragonfly hot end and the extruder. During the build, uh, in a rush, I cut it short apparently. I misjudged the math, I didn't measure correctly. And so the piece of Bowden tube in there was actually only about half the length I needed. During a filament change, a piece of filament got stuck in there and wedged. It required me taking apart the entire tool head to get it out, unfortunately. The mini afterburner in here 
due to its complex, um, compact design, unfortunately isn't too maintenance friendly when it comes to having to take the hot end out. You pretty much have to take apart the whole thing. So I did have to fix that issue. During the reassembly of this, another issue cropped up. I didn't have my BMG gears properly aligned when I closed the guidler and I actually cracked the guidler. So the first print after fixing the Bowden tube was actually worse because I was now having inconsistent extrusion issues due to a cracked guidler part. Printed a new one, installed that. Those issues are now fixed. Printer is good to go. So we've talked about the printer, we've talked about the kit, and we've talked about the build, but how well does the printer print? Well, it's a Voron, it prints great. Many of these prints that you see here today, you can get off thangs.com. And I wanna give a huge thanks to Thangs for sponsoring the video today. With features like being able to geometrically search for an object using an existing CAD file, view a model in 3D, use an augmented reality on your phone before even printing it to see if it'll fit on your shelf, Thangs has over 2.9 million 3D models and growing. So if you're looking for something like this wonderful Miss Minutes model from Loki, why not check out Thangs? Link in the description. And again, thank you for sponsoring today's episode. Now this was actually one of the first PLA prints that I printed on the machine. And this is a snake puzzle print. And this is a print in place model. It has very tight tolerances. So you have to have a very well tuned printer. And uh, this was my second PLA print off this machine. And as you can see, everything functions quite well with this guy. I also took the chance to print some Polyterra charcoal black PLA, and this was a puzzle piece. Everything fits together smoothly, everything is dimensionally accurate, all the overhangs are nice and clean, and this print turned out very well. And another PLA print, again, to show off, is the Miss Minutes. Now this print was printed with a bunch of supports, in fact, a little too heavy on the supports, but even with all those supports, they broke off relatively clean. All the overhangs were nice and clean. And this print, again, turned out great. But enough about PLA, how does it handle ABS? It is a Voron. Well, throw your top hat on, close the door, and you're good to go. With its high chamber temperatures, you're able to easily print ABS on this machine. And the removable magnetic PEI flex plate definitely makes this a lot easier. I did test some Voron parts on here just to make sure that everything prints well and everything's dimensionally accurate. We have a, a motor mount as well as some additional parts from the gantry just to verify that it can print ABS just fine. And of course it does. These were printed in some KVP Sparkle Blue ABS. We have no warping, no delamination, and these parts are solid and look clean. So that is an overview of the Voron V0.1 and the LDO Motors kit for it. Now, if you want me to do a more in-depth video on this printer after having it tuned and functioning for a while, let me know in the comments below. If you're looking to get one of these kits yourself, they are available through LDO Motors resellers. So you're gonna have to check your local regional LDO reseller. In Canada, this would be Sparta 3D, for example. In the US, you have Printed Solid and KB3D. Now this kit is not available yet. It should be in the coming weeks. Some vendors such as Printed Solid are just doing a waiting list for it. Some are doing pre-orders and others like KB3D is trying to organize a group buy for a chance at a lower price. Whatever method you choose, you're gonna to have to go through a local LDO Motors reseller to get your hands on this kit. Unfortunately though, for the European viewers, you're gonna to have to wait a little bit longer. They are working on getting the kit certified for sale in the EU. I know there's a lot more regulations with that. So you might see this kit with different uh, SKUs on the market. There might be a variant with and without electronics, for example, um, depending on how the whole certification process works out. They're trying to do things the proper way. So I hope you found this video informative. I do again want to give a shout out to Thanks for sponsoring today's episode and LDO Motors for providing me with this kit for review. If you have any questions about the kit or the Voron V01, make sure you ask them in the comments below. And if you want to know more about Voron and Voron Design, make sure you check out the Voron Design website and join the Discord. If you want to help support the content I create and the things I do, I have links in the description. Make sure you like that smash button, and I hope you learned something new today. As always, have yourself a great day. Cheers.